You're listening to Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the official podcast of Lingerie Fighting Championships. And now, here's your host, Michael Lutkin! Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the official LFC Lingerie Fighting Championships podcast. My name is Mike Larkin, and joining me today, folks, if there's anyone that really exudes beauty, strength, and dominance, it is the OG Glow herself. I am pleased to have on the one and only Hollywood. Hollywood, how are you? I am. am Thanks for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. First and foremost, I will say this, folks. If you have not heard my shows with Hollywood, go back to my On the Mic with Mike series and my Pop Culture History podcast. It's always a blast having you because you are always on the grind. You're always putting in the work. And Glow is always going on and on to the break of dawn for 30-plus years now. The feedback that you get and just the inspiration that you've put onto so many is absolutely wonderful to see. Oh, Oh. that's so great. Thank you very much. I work hard at it, let me tell you. (laughs) <laughs> You're very welcome. Well, I'm going to say this right now, folks. For those who have not seen it, one that really got to me and it really made me laugh, and I loved it because she did such a great impression of you. Folks, Allison Kay, the one and only Sienna on her Twitch stream, did a nice little cosplay of you and did your public service announcement about drinking and driving to the T. For those who have not seen it, you got to see it. I loved it. I loved it. I know, right, Michael? Isn't she awesome? I really love her. Uh, one of you know, there's so many ladies out there, uh, younger, obviously, than us, that still keep Glow alive in their podcasts. And she did. When I saw that, I was like, oh, my God. I go, that's so great. And then I was able to see her uh, and and uh, Marty Bell. I saw both of them in Indiana just a few weeks ago. So they're always a breath of fresh air. They're uh, sweet girls. They're respectful and they're very, very nice. Um, so I, I love that. And every time I, I just love that, that women can empower each other and be very, um, they raise each other up, not tear each other down. And, you know, in this world with these everywhere and people hiding behind these, we don't always see that, you know. So I love that they're so real um, and it just, it's, it's a joy every time I, I work with some. Francine's another one. I love her as well. Very real people. So thank you and kudos to the ladies, you know, that are coming up and, um, you know, that still love and respect Glow and um, are always mentioning us. So, I mean, you guys are awesome. So thank you. Absolutely. For those who have not seen Sienna and Marty Bell, go back and look at their work in Impact Wrestling and in the NWA. And I mean, for women like that, like you mentioned, one of Francine, one of the iconic managers and valets in the world of CW, Extreme Championship Wrestling. Now, what's great about that, and I love that you brought that up. So with LFC, it's Lingerie Fighting Championships. It's a little bit of MMA, a little bit of clothing, and a little bit of wrestling. Not in that order, but mostly in that variation. But what I love about it, too, as well... We'll have the LFC girls, and one that we know very well, including Miss Jenny Bloody Valentine, a.k.a. Jennifer Thomas, really showcases a lot of the session girls in LFC. And what I've always compared, I'm sure, I'm surprised your ears don't ring when I say this, I've always compared LFC to Glow because it has that sensual vibes, it has that entertainment factor, it has empowering women. So if you can encompass that sex appeal mixed with some badass women, I include you in this, Miss Hollywood. That's a, uh, that's a variation, that's a recipe right there. That That's what you it, have to a recipe it sure is and speaking of jennifer thomas another one yep another great girl when i do all my videos um i always include jennifer thomas a breath of fresh air uh tomiko is also i believe i don't know a lot of the ladies that are in lfc uh but they do such a great job and i'm just like oh my you know i i still I know if I wanted to do it, I could do that. Jennifer would have me in a second, but I kind of stand back and I watch and a little bit here and there. But I mean, if there's MMA in there, which you said there is, I just, oh my gosh, wow, that's a tough sport. That is just crazy. So I always say when the younger you are, the less, you know, you have no fear. You know, and so when you're younger, I say, go, 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 go. 
do whatever you can, do as much as you can, learn, learn, learn. Um, and Jennifer Thomas, like I said, is way up there on the scale. Um, anybody who doesn't know her, find her at Facebook or Instagram. And if you do, you probably do already. She's one of a kind. That is somebody in this industry um, that will always win, 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 for sure. And she's a winner in my in my pocket, for sure. I can see her face right now. We oh. can sit there and look at each other and just start laughing and That's you know, right. beat each other's minds. <laughs> right. That's the thing, too, because here's the thing. As someone like yourself, we both met Jenny. We love Jenny. Jenny is yep. one of my absolute favorites. First of all, you just put the feelers out there. This is why I'm laughing. You just put the feelers out into the LFC universe. Now, a lot of people want to see probably see you and Jenny in, in LFC now. You just put that into the universe, Hollywood. She would be awesome to wrestle, for sure. And yeah. that's that's the thing with that. We've been doing it for so long anyway. Why don't we do it for, for LFC? Why not? Right. Well, well, that's the thing, too. A little bit of MMA, a little bit of wrestling, a little bit of clothing. It, what I love about it, too, is as well, like you mentioned Tomiko, first of all, who's another one, badass in her own right, looks amazing, constantly on the grind with the whole gym and the fitness side of things, and she's kicking ass and taking names. Another beauty that really stands out there, right? Oh, absolutely. And a sweetheart. There's, yep. there's a, a mean body, a, a mean bone in any of those girls' uh, bodies. Not at all. And that's the type of people that you want to surround yourself with. You want to surround yourself with people who are positive. Like I said, bringing each other up. To, I can't stress it enough, you know, because I've seen personally myself, I've seen nasty, ugly stuff. And I know we want to keep this positive because that's what I want to do is keep it positive. So, you know, um, we'll go on to to the next question how's that we're just going to keep it positive <laughs> no you're totally fine i absolutely agree with you because i'm i'm the same way so first yeah. of all positivity breeds positivity and it if you steer it towards this way it's like why you know why life's too short for that life is way too short i mean today we have so much going on and so many different platforms um for people to see us on it's it's great this thing that's going on with twitter right now i'm thinking well you know, I was talking about this the other day. What if they shut it down? What if they shut down all social media? I mean, they could, and maybe not in our lifetime, but it might get to the point where people are done with social media. I, I don't know, Michael. That's just a whole nother thing for us to talk about. Oh, I'm, I'm right there with you. And that actually brings a great point because it's like you have everything going on with social media and Twitter. We're, we're in a day and age where, and I'll put it to you like this, and I'll use this uh, reenactment here. We're more about this instead of this the unity is pretty much gone we're in a time in a place where it's just like everybody's got an opinion everybody's got a fight and then we have to bicker the issue about it with social media is there's twitter there's instagram there's facebook hell there's even tiktok now we become so accustomed with the hands-on approach of technology right in our hands and in our faces that if we go back to the way we were where it's just like here's a phone bada bing bada boom we actually have to go outside yeah. into the outside world nobody would know how to what the fuck to do excuse my language but no we don't well, want to so they start all over. Right. I'm looking at my nephew. Okay, my nephew's 20 years old, and they are whizzes with this. I mean, he's telling me about go on to this site and you can watch all these movies for free. I mean, it's going to get to the point where maybe they don't want all of that, and we might have to go back. Uh, uh, what is it? Um, oh, the movie, the Australian movie, many years ago. I know what you're talking about, but I always put it like it's like we're going back to the Stone Age. Like the Stone Age is like the current day. Like going <laughs> to like days of faxes and freaking like AOL Messenger. It's like oh my god, faxes! Remember your beeper? Beep beep yeah. beep beep. Oh, go to the payphone. Go to the payphone. Give me a pager. You know what I'm saying? Beep. So, you know so, I'm and that's those are glow days. Me and Lightning were always on those phones. We'd be on tour. We'd go to the airport. Boom. We would be in one of those booths calling our boyfriends. Yes, we're here. Blah, 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 blah. We're doing this. We're doing that. And they used to call me instead of Jeannie Basson, they'd call me Jeannie Payphone. Jeannie Payphone. Well, you just put a gimmick out there. Here's the thing. In a day and age where we've had, like, the 90s where everything was based on, like, job descriptions, where you had, like, the Duke, the Dumpster, Drosies, and so many characters like that, you just oh, put... he's so nice, by the way. Right, nice. exactly. Wonderful person. I love Duke, the Dumpster, Drosies. Yeah. But that's the thing, too. Like, you just put it out there. Like, that would... There's a character back in the day that we have, Jeannie Payphone. You could come on with the phone like Zach Morris did and Saved by the Bell. You know what I'm I saying? I love it. Right? That now, would be... That would be hilarious. All of a sudden, you're just the 80s chick, the 80s person, you know, or whatever. You, oh, my gosh. You haven't evolved yet. That's a good 
bank. Right. Easily because I lived it. Yep, exactly. You have to always portray the character and amplify it to based on your own surroundings, right? Exactly. Very good, Mike. Absolutely. Now, the thing, too, where we're speaking about back in the day here, and for me, like everybody was going through, and I'm going to say this to you with the utmost sincerity and respect, you actually helped around the stuff going on with COVID, because I'm going to say this right now, as a wrestling fan, and what we get to see on YouTube, and I got to give a shout out to Time Out TV Wrestling, it came up in my recommendations at the time, so I wanted to ask you about this. Man, you were on the family feud against the WCW talents, and we got to talk about this because, first of all, badass episode. Now, here's the team here, folks. WCW was represented by Sting, Tom Zank, good old JR, a little bit of Brad Armstrong, God rest his soul, Brian Pillman, God rest his soul, yes, and, and you, Mount Fuji, God rest his soul, Godiva, Jackie Stallone, Justice, and, of course, led by the Hollywood. Talk about the family feud experience. This was the one with Ray Combs, God rest his soul. Talk about family feud here, Hollywood. Yeah, man, you, you do, I love it. You do your due, due diligence well because I have them all written down as well. So what an honor and a privilege to be on that, not really knowing back in the day who I, the only person I really knew was Sting. I didn't really know Animal back then and Jim Ross and Brad Armstrong and the Candyman. And, you know, so we were talking about this. Being on the show, and I was the team captain, I don't know how that came to be, but I was grateful to be the team captain. And did you know, trivia here, I didn't do just five shows, not 10 shows. I did 15 shows with them. So the girl, so we have different girls too. We had um, um, Sally, the farmer's daughter as well, but Jackie Salone, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, Hitting that button was the most important thing. Not thinking about what the question was. I'm like, man, I got to slam that button. Think later. <laughs> so, so you get the off the wall answers from me because all I wanted to do is be the first person to hit that thing and go, oh, da, 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 you know, and blurt something out that was probably stupid. But it was a good thing because we were giving to charities. And that was the beauty of it. It's two different uh, uh, platforms of wrestling here, men, uh, male, female, uh, different, you know, um, Glow, WCW, and then we're playing for our charities. And, you know, that was kind of before, I, I don't know, I just, everybody does charities now. Uh, like when I make soap, I give to certain charities here and there, but, but what a beautiful thing that we were doing, plus being on TV and meeting these guys, um, I'll have to bring that up to JR sometime when I see him at one of the wrestling conventions, uh, see if he remembers it or not. Well, he was in one of the finals on that. When the guys did their thing, it was Brian Pillman and JR in the final yep. two. Yes. Well, yep. well, that's the thing, too, with Family Feud. I believe this was around, like, 91. So you had Sting at the right. top where he was the WCW champion. Glow was doing its thing, and y'all were riding. That's the amazing time, too, as well, because people talk about, like, we talk about the golden age there, like, late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. Everything. It's a simpler time. We're doing charities. We're doing bada bing, bada boom, which is so important, like the charity side of things. Like for me, I'm big into the anti-bullying campaigns. Give me an anti-bullying charity. Give me a cancer charity. I love that. You know what I'm saying? I'm all over. Me too. You have to do that. And I think not just because like people think it's right, but also at the same time, you're giving something to the less fortunate. And especially during this time, I mean, we're coming on Christmas, for God's sake. It's a season of giving here, Hollywood. You know what? We're giving back. And like I without the fans. I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. I wouldn't have um, a Twitter page or a Facebook page or be asked to do these conventions. I, I can't tell you, Michael, I'm just always humbled and honored when a promoter says, Hollywood, what are you doing on these dates? We, and I'm, and I'm working for different promoters and I love it. I just, again, humbled. Thank you promoters for, for inviting me to your, to your conventions. Now, we were going to talk about a convention coming up, which is L.A. Comic Con. And that's a given. We usually do that every year. They offer us a free table. Um, so that's just another great platform for you guys, for the fans to see different ladies. I've got Thunderbolt and Lightning. I don't think I've had Thunderbolt and Lightning together as a tag team. I don't know. It's been years, probably it- since they wrestled. Mm-hmm. So they'll be there. I have Major Tanya and myself this year. And I asked quite a few other ladies. And you know what? You either come or you don't come. And that's okay. As long as we can represent and keep the uh, glow, um, keep it uh, the brand alive, I'm all for it. 
I'll say, man, when you have something like Comic-Con, which is just not just a big convention in its own right, but it's another thing where, kind of like Sessions, and we'll talk a touch upon this, what I love about anything in life, it's the uniqueness, it's the preferences, and it's people expanding their horizons and using their creativity and their imagination. So it's one of those things as well where it's a united front, but also at the same time, it's fun for everybody to dress as their favorite thing, feel empowered from an external standpoint. It's wonderful. It's a run to run time for people. Oh, yeah. The Comic-Cons are badass. They're so fun. I, I, I'm i pretty exhausted after the three days, if I'm doing three days, because you're on. You know what I mean? And I give 110%. I always have an hour will. And it's just what you do. It's because I love what I do. And I love meeting our fans. And I love hearing the stories. And they love hearing our stories. Right. Well, that's the thing. It's the platform to tell your stories, but also at the same time, what I love about it here. First of all, David McClain. Shout out to David McClain. We go from GLOW. We got Wow Women of Wrestling, which yes. still, in its own right, is on another season doing its thing. It wears every Saturday and Sunday. Like, he still keeps the brand and everything going. You got to give a love. That's to his passion, but- his passion since the day I met him. And that was, De- that was, I'm sorry, it was like October 1985 is when I met him. And he's still going. You got to give him credit for that. And also this new generation with some of the talent that used to be from the original Glow and also some of the talent that they're using to like really represent those characters that we saw back in the day. I think it's a nice interpretation and representation that really goes a long way. And I mean, for you, speaking of being interpreted and represented here, we got to give a shout out to the one and only T-Bell himself. I'm not talking about Taco yeah. Bell. I'm talking about Tommy Bell, baby. Poor oh, my gosh. He is so talented. Wow. Yeah major talented tommy thank you thank you thank you for that beautiful drawing is that like i can't draw i can barely put makeup on you know what i mean so it's like he is is tremendous i don't know if anybody's seen it but it's on the facebook page I, i don't know if i have it on my instagram or on my twitter but it's on Twitter. What I'm going to do actually here, Hollywood, in this spot of the show, when, when this comes out, folks, you all see the beautiful drawing of pool sharks. It's my good friend, Miss Hollywood, over here. And Goldie Blair. First of all, beautiful stare down. And Goldie Blair is another beautiful and lovely human being in her own, right? Oh, isn't she sweet? Another person. Another, another great girl. That's the thing, too. And also, what I love about it, first of all, I'll be the first one right here. I can't draw a stick figure. So drawing for me, <laughs> uh, uh, I can't do it. But there's other talented people like Tommy out there that make up for it. And the right. best and the best thing I have to say to you is he actually said a nice little thing about you on Twitter here. I got to read it to everybody. So Tommy Bell, when I put up one of our earlier shows, he wrote, learn how to draw female fighters by drawing you. You're the one of the inspirations for one of his drawings and just how he got into doing his thing. Dang, Miss Hollywood. Oh, that's beautiful. Tommy Bell. Yeah, we talked a little bit. and He said he is so busy. But next year, he said, I just want, I want to draw you. And I'm like, oh honored humbled again see what i mean kindness michael goes a long way yep. saying you, you know to people not assume you know it's just i can't tell you how that how much important that is for me i say it every time in my facebook lies what's the most important thing everybody that's I'm, right be nice man be nice that's it Beautifully said. And also the same thing about that, too, as well. Like, we talk about the Sessions wrestling community, and here's the first thing about it. Like, it's funny, like, with Jennifer Thomas and what she's built with women, whether it be modeling, bodybuilding, wrestling, women of all empowerment with women's athletes on fire, too. Like, for you, when I first found out, like, you were doing, like, Sessions wrestling, like, obviously, followed the glow years, followed what you've been doing in your trajectory. But for you with Sessions Wrestling, it's kind of also like a hand in glove because it showcases that overall funness and overall, like we mentioned, sensuality, sex appeal, but also empowerment. Like it, for you, like that kind of came like really, really at a time where it's just like you showcase your experience, whatever endeavor or venture you do, you just nail it out of the park, Hollywood. You know, and I, I was doing that way back in the day. So after Glow and Belinda Bell, actually, do you remember Bel- Belinda Bell from Steel Kittens? I do recall the name. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> She said, do you want to do some session wrestling? I'm like, well, what is that? She And the cool thing about it, when I started doing it, I used her ring and it was awesome. I could meet the uh, session people in her backyard with people around um, and we were wrestling in the ring. And then, you know, some people get so bent out of shape. Oh, it's this and you're wrestling around on a bed and you're doing this and you're doing that. Well, you know what? Don't judge mm-hmm. until personally no you know i have met so many wonderful wonderful people that i could call friends fans i have people that you know 
don't eat, they're, shell, they're like shell shock. They'll just sit right there in the chair. Oh my God, I'm speaking to Hollywood and they'll ask me questions, you know, and it's so wonderful. And since I've been doing it for so long, I do have my favorites that I see. And I, I you know, and I have to say that I've been seeing those people for 20 years. Um, so it's a good thing. It's a positive thing. There's nothing wrong with session wrestling. I enjoy it. I love meeting our fans. So thank you all for, for, for seeing me and still seeing me to this day. It's crazy. Well, we both watch each other grow up. Right. That's the thing, too. Or the... get old, whatever you want to say it. We don't really get old. We no. just get, we get better. Well it's, well, it's the old saying, Hollywood, you like a fine wine, you get better with time, man. Huh? <laughs> oh, Michael, Michael. Well, that's the thing, too, as well, as you brought it up there. And, and I'll say this right now. Like, first of all, learning about Sessions Wrestling. I know people see certain imagery of it, and it's just like, really? Like, what do you like you said? But that's the – that's the, not just with Sessions, but just in general. People have that one judgment, that automatic assumption, if you will. And it's like, don't knock it until – You know what? A judge like that, and I know several of them, I am not close friends with any of them. Don't judge me. I don't judge you, so don't judge me. Right. You know, open mind. That is so important. If you just had an open mind about life – wouldn't things just run smoother? They do. No, I, I agree because, like, with what I'm doing here, and now, first of all, when people see it, LFC lingerie fighting championships, I'm like, okay, yes, lingerie is involved, but if you actually watch an event, actually watch the reality series, watch the product, watch Glow, watch this, watch that, you'll have a better understanding and an open-mindedness and an overall perception that also can really be seen to a broader light and a broader picture from the imagery standpoint, the perspective, the gravitational pull, if you will, that really can develop into what you like and what you see. So don't go out there already and just automatically assume. The way also I compare it to, like, look at the LFL back in the day. You had the Laundry Football League. It's bad. Yeah. Badass women kicking ass right. and taking names on the football field, but they also kick the crap out of each other, and it makes and for a great time. Great while they were doing it, so right. kudos to them. You just reminded me. Uh, I have a uh, my autobiography is almost done. Uh, Dan, oh. Yeah, I, finally, we've been talking about this for a long time. Dan Murphy, who did Sisterhood of the Squared Circle, is co-writing it, and he's got a big chunk done. We're supposed to have everything done by the end of the year. Uh, I just thought about it. I should call it Don't Judge a Book by Its Cover. <laughs> oh, my goodness. There you go. I right? like it. First yeah. of all, well, that's what I'm going to be getting to read. I definitely want to read your book. Oh, I can't wait till it comes I'm out. Excited. Super excited because I've been working on it for so long. And you know what? Maybe in 2007 it wasn't ready. And then before the pandemic, when I was ready to go and everything slowed everything down for me, it wasn't ready. So, you know, look at it. I mean, I have so much to talk about from 2007 to now or from 2019 to now. I mean, look, there's so much to cover. So I wasn't really ready. You know, things happen for a reason. That's how I look at it. 100%. I'm going to say this right now. First of all, and I know this might be very um, shocking to a lot of people, but Hollywood, and this is why I love you. This is why I call you a friend. When it comes to chatterbox and when it comes to having a lot to say, this is why I love you because you're very passionate. You're very empowering. You, you got a lot to say. You don't see Italian in us. You know what I'm saying? We talk a lot. <laughs> you, know, and, you know, hey. But hey! I, I appreciate that. But no, I just but, ask you, are you going to make lasagna for, for Christmas? Oh, oh my yeah. God. I'm sure one of my relatives will. My goodness gracious. I've been doing that for years. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. But, you yeah, know, that's the thing. Like, for you to write this book, and I know a lot of people can relate to it. You can put some glow stuff in there, Sessions. You can really talk about everything that you've accomplished. I and will give you the ability, sweetheart, because I did the pilot in all those four seasons. So I was there for all of it. Yeah. You can write a book about glow, but I think you wouldn't be able to cover as much or know as much if you weren't there personally for the whole run. Right. That's the thing. And I mean, well, who better than you to really touch about? Like we've talked about like the OG glow. I always kind of compute. You're kind of like the female Howard Finkel. And the reason why I say that is when Howard Finkel joined the WWF, he was their first ever employee ring announcer. And you're one of the OGs, the first with glow. So, I mean, you kind of got like that Howard Finkel effect about you. <laughs> Just call me Jeannie Hollywood Howard. <laughs> Hollywood Howard. Yes. Oh, Howie, Howard. Howie. Yeah. Howard. Yeah. I Howie? love I can't wait. I'm super excited. Uh, super excited. You have no idea. Oh, and Dan Murphy, thank you so much. He said it would be an honor for me to write this book. I mean, he didn't even bat an eyelash. And I love the way he talks and speaks and has my voice for me. Um, he's kind of like, uh, I'm trying to think of his, um, Neil Strauss. 
Neil yep. Strauss is another great uh, author, uh, did Marilyn Manson book and Jenna Jameson. You know, he didn't make Jenna look cheap. And just, and uh, you know what I mean? It was just, uh, I, I've read parts of the book and um, I love how both of these authors capture um, the um, their voices so well. Because that's important to me. If you don't catch my voice, it's not going to be about, if you won't know it's me. It, you'll know it's me when you start reading. Aha, uh -huh, that's Hollywood. That's Jeannie. Yeah, that, oh yeah. Oh my God, that happened? Really? You did that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's the thing too. Also, like, first of all, what I love is I've always used this quote. It's life is an art form and we're all here to apply our craft. So you're applying your craft, but it's being showcased in a literature form. And I mean, like you mentioned with like Neil with the Jenna Jameson stuff and the Marilyn Manson stuff, two polarizing figures. And I think what I've always loved about Marilyn Manson, like besides the music and stuff, like that dude is a smart son of a gun, very articulate. And that's, that was another thing because people judge the perception of his image. You can hate him. Right. I don't get it. But the dude is like an articulate and eloquent son of a gun and he can actually speak and he has a great voice and he actually makes a lot of great points. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. does. I love it. Same here. And I think that's the most important thing, the articulate side, the eloquent side. And for you, I got to ask this. I mean, with what you've done, and we'll talk about social media here, you're always up in the mix with that Sven Gulli style. I mean, you're all about that Sven Gulli. Can we talk about the Sven Gulli stuff? Because you are probably... <laughs> Is he great or what? That's great. I love him too. I'll be honest. I have my one of my best friends to this day. His name is Kyle. We've been friends since high school. My right. dude, my dude's an old soul because he's younger than me, as am I. So we're both old souls, and we talk about <laughs> Sanguli a lot. He hooked me to. It. He what? I'm sorry. I said he hooked me to it. He hooked me to Sanguli. Exactly, like, and that's exactly the same for me. My friend William Taylor, who was a, a huge fan of of Glow, said my friend is Rich, Co I don't know how to pronounce it, Rich Cousin, I think, That's uh, Spenguli, and I go, what? And so I started looking, and I'm a huge horror freak, so I love the funnier, the cheesier, the cheaper, the better, okay? So I'm all about that kind of genre, <laughs> and um, he told me to follow him, and then I bought a t-shirt from the store, I tore it up kind of this is torn up and I put it on and I posted it and I hashtagged it with Spinguli and then I started talking and he started following me. What a great guy. I know that I will run into him. Probably he's going to have to be in his area, probably Chicago at any of the comic cons there. So I need to go out there because I have to meet him. We talked about me being on the show, but now again, this is during COVID. So they weren't doing anything. Nobody was doing it, nothing. So maybe as time goes, because uh, he loves wrestling, you know that, right? He yep. absolutely loves the wrestling. He's and we have a lot in common too, because George Perez, who passed away, uh, of cancer, who uh, was a comic DC artist, very popular, George Perez. He passed, but he was also friends with George and had interviewed George um, back in the day at the Comic Cons. But uh, I love Spinguli. Great, great, great. I did, I have to tell you this, I'm not sure if I told you before, but I took a class in uh, low budget um, filmmaking, <laughs> which was awesome uh, in Los Angeles. And I wrote, uh, I have a 78 page script that I would love to see the daylight. And actually a friend of mine in New York, Brian Hobson helped me write that. I'm not the best of writers, but I have these ideas and created, just help me get the words flowing and get it all right. And uh, together we did a 78 page script. So I'm hoping that, and I call it um, death match at Diablo. <laughs> and we'll just leave it at that. I like that. See, right. Jet Diablo, I like it. Yeah. All righty. Or all the zombie stuff, by the way. This is way before, oh. you know, TV and AMC and FX started with the zombie whole thing. So. Yeah, this is before we had all the zombie apocalypse movies and all the zombie face shows, Zombie Land, and all that. Yep, I feel oh. you. Yeah. So I still have it. It's sitting right here. Maybe one day we'll we'll film it. It'll I, be good. I cannot wait, and I hope that does come to fruition. It kind of reminds me of, like, I know Spangoolie's talked about Vincent Price and stuff like that, which it's crazy to think because I'll tie this into Glow with the golden age of the 80s. Like, my mom was talking about this to me the other day, and she even said, she's like, can you believe that next year in 2023, Thriller's going to be 40 years old? And I'm like, 
I know, right? It's crazy. One of the most iconic music videos out there, Michael Jackson. Oh, is all. 40 years of thriller, Hollywood. Unbelievable. Did you, speaking of Michael Jackson, too, did you watch the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame at all? It was so good. It was really good. Great tributes, great times. It's, yeah. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is always awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was it was really really good. I enjoyed it. I know we got off subject there for a minute, but it was just you know I think that you know creative people uh, it all goes hand in hand. Like my significant other Ryan, guitar player, he's out with Ace freely and 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 playing with Ace. And when he's not playing with Ace, sometimes it's with Gene Simmons when he does his solo band. Uh, just what I say when people ask, what do you guys do? Well, Ryan's in, in music entertainment, and I say I'm in sports entertainment. I mean, that's what it is, and it works. And it does, and it's a nice mix, because with the world of music and the world of wrestling, first of all, so much so much similar with the fact of you're always on the road, like the, the grind never stops, so there's always the sacrifice that goes into it. And first and foremost, I'm going to say right now, with, with how you looked over the years and just your overall, how you present yourself like Santa, the rock and roll thing is always just because I know you love it so much, but also at the same time, you portrayed it so well. Like, a lot of people can gravitate and kind of grasp what you were putting out there. I mean, Hollywood and Vine, like, the whole nine there. Just, you fit the scene, and you've always played it well because it's always you amplifying yourself. So, once, it's, it's love, man. It's all love and respect for that, man. Absolutely. You got it. You under, I made that character exact, not exactly, but pretty damn close to my lifestyle. That's it. It's fun. It's not boring. I don't think I could have. I, I was, you know, brought up and raised. Dad's like, get a job. And so I was in medical. And then when that glow, you know, interview audition came, I ran with it and I stayed with it. And that's one thing that I did do. I never stopped. I continued it. I continued with the glow brand when the girls were, you know, going in different directions, getting married, having children. A lot of them did that. That wasn't in the cards for me. I would have liked for it to have been in the cards, but it wasn't. So I just kept what I knew best, and that was um, the wrestling. So here we are. How many years later? 34, 36 years later? Years, yep. Wow. Most people are are um, retired by now. <laughs> Well, I think it's 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 one of those things, too, as well, to add on to your point that you said so eloquently. It's like what I like to call the SOS. It's the, it's the significance of simplicity. You know what I'm saying? The significance yeah. of simplicity where, like, it's great to have the nine to five, and that's awesome. Like, that's but awesome. Also, it is. But you also have to, a lot of people, that's not for them. You want to expand. And I think for you, getting into that role, nailing that glow audition, and then transitioning, transmortifying, and transforming yourself – I think that's great because it shows your growth, and obviously you've grown over the years, man, to do what you do. But, I mean, you got the soap thing now, which we're going to mention this because I see you always promoting your soaps. You're creating. You're putting a lot out there, man. So you never stop with your creativity there. There it is. Oh, my goodness. Yes. This one. Oh, it's so lovely. Uh, what do I call this one? Holly, uh, Holiday Jolly or something, I think I call this. This is just a lovely soap. Um Again, the soap site is hollywoodbotanica.com. That's with a K. These are made, four simple ingredients, organic coconut oil, olive oil, shea butter, castor oil. That's it. Sodium hydroxide mix, which is lye and water. And here's this one. Oh, oh this is so good. This is my uh, holiday berry. I love it. And they could be just as simple as this. For those that don't like really fun soap, here you go. There it is right there. And the good thing about these things, there's no preservatives in any of them. And of course, I did this before the pandemic, Pandemic, excuse me. So I thought that was just kind of like, what, what are the odds, the timing? All of a sudden, now Hollywood is selling soap. I didn't do it because of the pandemic. I started this in 2018 in December and thought, oh, this would be kind of a fun thing to do. I mean, I'm not making hundred millions of dollars. This is just a side gig. It's chill. When I get off the road, it's what I love to do. And that is the bottom line. Plus, it's good for you. That's all. So it's hollywoodbotanica.com. I love doing what I do. I love creating. I guess that's part of, of me. Uh, my mother says you get that from your grandmother. And I thank you, Grandma. That was very sweet of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean... Well, first of all, first of all, I get yourself some Hollywood soap, man. I'm just going to put that right now because it's awesome. But also at the same time, if Gene Simmons and Kiss can have the Kiss casket and so much Kiss apparel and Julie. Oh, my God. 
How can you not have some Hollywood soap out there, man? Put out the soap. Besides the fact that it's good for you, who doesn't want to have some good soap, right? There's conservatives in the soap. That's yep. it. And I love it. And I love doing what I do. That's all. It's just a part of me. And it's Hollywood, baby. Hollywood, <laughs> Vine, Hollywood. Now, I'm going to say this, folks. Check out Comic-Con because you're going to get to see this woman and a lot of amazing glow women there. Y'all doing your conventions. Y'all are up in the mix. And I'm going to say right now, Sean Donnelly, LFC CEO. We just put two matches out into the LFC universe, into the fear, if you will. Everybody now wants to see some Hollywood and Jenny yeah. Valentine. People want to see some Hollywood and Tomiko. We just booked some dream matches for LFC. And that's what it is. <laughs> okay. Booking, baby. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Oh, Thanks. my goodness. You're welcome. We got to get you in there, man. Because I'm going to say right now, what I always tell the girls, it's the representation of your presentation. The moment you go through the curtain and you come out, make every moment count. But also at the same time, the sexy side, the lingerie side goes into it, and the style and profile, and if you will, I'll do a little Ric Flair woo. But for you, Miss <laughs> Hollywood, I'm going to ask you, because you style, you profile. We've seen your style over the years, <laughs> 80s to now. For you on the lingerie side, because that is this thing. It's a lingerie fighting championship. For you, lingerie side, if you were to do this, if you were to come into the LFC world, Miss Hollywood, what is your lingerie style, man? We got a nice little elegant lingerie, a little burlesque, bada bing, bada boom. What's the lingerie style of Hollywood, baby? Of course. It's going to be black, obviously, because I am a heel and I will always be a heel. And mm. if any members glow, what did I wear? A black corset with some pink. Those are my colors, black and pink. So you will see... Oh, and gloves. There's going to have to be gloves as well. Oh. Don't you worry. As, as long as I can stay in it, mm -hmm. I'll be good to go. Hey, with the experience that you've had with Jenny and Tomiko, and besides Jenny and Tomiko, I got to put this over. Man, you put it on your social media, and I'm hooked because she's another beautiful woman. We got to talk about Christy Etzel there, man. You did your thing. I love Christy. Christy. Oh, my gosh. There, you can't talk. You can't say wrestling without putting Christy Etzel in it as well. Mm -hmm. Another, another sweet girl. Somebody that I trust. These girls that I'm talking about are girls that I have worked with for many years. They are honest. You know what I mean? They have your back always. They don't talk shit. Um, the, like I said, those are the type of girls that you want to work with and that you want to surround yourself with. When you have a bunch of girls like that, you cannot go wrong. Things go so much smoother that way. And, be, and, and of course, being honest is a whole nother thing. I don't like to talk behind the back. Uh, Christy Etzel, I love you. Jennifer Thomas, Tomiko, you three girls, watch out because Hollywood is coming to kick your ass soon. <laughs> I can't even say it any better. That was beautiful. Oh, take me back to the 80s. Take me back now. I love you. Now, I'm going to say this right now, folks. If you've not checked out an LFC event, go out of your way. It's LFCfights.com for our last event, LFC 36 Booty Camp 4. LFC Network is on the Roku, so if you got your streaming service, you got the R to the O to the K to the U, get yourself on the Roku LFC Network, which gives you the events, this podcast, and so much great content from LFC, and go out of your way and check out Hollywood. And this is where I'll step back, because Hollywood, you're all over the social media. You got Facebook, you got Twitter, you got Instagram. Hell, you may even be on that tickety-tock. Where can we follow you on all forms of social media, my friend? Sure. If you're a Twitter person, it's a, a Glow Hollywood. Instagram, official Glow Hollywood. Then there's the soap, Hollywood Botanica, on Instagram as well. And if you're a Facebook nut, you can find me at Hollywood Productions or Jeannie Bassone. There you have it. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Look forward to hearing all of your you guys ask me any questions also about the book. I have a lot of fan stuff. You have any input that you want to be in the book about glow, your experiences with glow uh, or the character Hollywood. You can email me. You can Instagram me message. You can you'll find me. Just Google me. I'm there. Going to say right now with this also be the season's. Seasons of greetings and seasons of Christmas and giving back and just the wonderful holiday time, the holiday season. I'm going to say right now, Miss Hollywood, you are gifting yourself, my friend. You're the gift that keeps on giving 24 7, and we love you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. And actually, before we even close this out, I got to say this because you are probably one of the most down to earth people that I know. It's such a consummate professional. Do you have any final words, not just to the LFC universe, but to the fans that have been supporting you since day one of GLOW? What do you have for the final words for the fans, Miss Hollywood? You guys are super, super awesome. Thank you kindly for following us, following me, because without you, I wouldn't be here right now. So stay well, stay healthy, wash your hands, and be nice.
beautifully said. And I'm going to say right now, once your book comes out, as we talk about the technological side, I'm adding it to my Kindle, baby. That's going to be right in my selection. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And as I always say, to close this show out, as the show is appropriately titled, Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the three key elements that make women the work of art that they are in Hollywood. I include you in those sentiments. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Fight, fight, fight. Gonna kick some.